So the question is about sketching a curve using uh, information about extrema and um, the uh, inflection points. And I think the first thing to do would be just take the function uh, and find the intercepts. So we're going to set the function equal to 0 to see where the x-intercepts occur. We can factor out an x cubed, right, which leaves us with x minus four thirds, right? And so if we split this, we can get x cubed equal to zero. Uh, this is from algebra, where you use the zero product property. If you have two things multiplied to equal zero, then we know that one of them must be zero. Uh, we have that x is equal to zero, or that x could equals four thirds, right? So those give so we have two points already. We have the point zero, zero, right? And the point uh, four thirds, comma, zero. Um, the next thing that we're going to look at is the extrema. So max, max and min points. We're going to set y prime equal to zero. Uh, and those will go to the critical points. Our y prime from using the power rule would be 4x cubed and minus 4x squared. Um, so we're going to solve uh, this equal to 0. Right? And we can factor our 4x squared out, and we get an x minus 1. Um, and again, the 0 product property, we get x 4x squared equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. We get x equals 0, and um, x equals 1, right? Uh, so those are going to be, uh, we need to figure out if they're going to be maximum or minimum points. And to do that, we can go to the first derivative test. Uh, the first derivative test, uh, what we can do is set up a number line and just figure out in each of these intervals, right? So we know just based on what's happening with y prime, right? We know that at the point zero, right, the y prime will equal zero, and at one, right, it will also be zero. But in between, we want to know whether y prime is positive or negative. And so we can test the point like negative 1, we can test the point like 0 0.5, and a point like uh, 10. Right? It's not really critical as long as you have one point in each region. And we're going to take those and plug them back into 4x squared times x minus 1. And all we, I mean, we're not really interested in what the actual value is, we're just interested in what whether it's positive or negative, right? Or negative, right? That's the big question. So when I plug in negative 1 in here, right, the squared makes it positive, so 4 times negative 1 squared would be positive, negative 1 times minus 1 is negative 2, so a positive times a negative will make sure that this region is all negative values of y prime, which means that it's decreasing. Um, if we plug in 0 0.5, we also get a negative, right, because 4x squared times x minus 1 is still negative, right. Um, and then uh, at 1, right, if we plug in 10, then obviously everything is positive, right, and so in this region. Um, so this uh, x equals 1 would be a min. It looks like what's happening um, at uh, y prime is probably an uh, inflection point, right? But at the, the very least, it's plateauing, and you can't really have a plateau without uh, having an inflection point. So um, just to verify that, uh, we will go ahead and look at... Um, I guess we know the point zero zero is going to be zero zero, but we should also find out what the y value of one is. So if we plug in one, we get one minus four thirds, so it's going to be negative uh, negative one third. So 
So those are three points that we know. Um, and finally, to verify that's an inflection point, uh, we'll say y double prime is, right? So we take the power rule of our first derivative, we get 12x squared minus 8x. Right. And this will give us a place, uh, let's see, uh, if we factor this, right, we set this equal to 0, we get uh, 4x pulled out, and 3x minus 1, and so we get 0 equals 4x, and 3x minus 1 equals 0, uh, so x equals 0, and x equals one third. Those will be our two inflection points. Um, and now we can kind of take a look at what's happening with our graph. Uh, so we know at zero, zero, we have a point. We know at one, uh, we're at negative one third. So that should be like roughly, hmm, so we're going to put a point there, right? And the tricky thing is that we have obviously an inflection point. If we look back at the slope, we're decreasing all the way until we reach this point, one comma negative uh, one third, and then it's going to be increasing from that point. So that's pretty easy to see. Um, what we should check uh, um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the second derivative, we can check at, for instance, on the left side, if we plug in negative one here, uh, y double prime would have a uh, negative times another negative value. Y pri y double prime would be positive, right? So, but y prime is negative, right? And if y double prime is positive, then we're on a happy face, but we're on this part of it, right? So the left part of this, before you reach the point zero, zero, will have this kind of shape in the red square. And so we'll have the point come in this way and then it'll basically come across and then change concavity when it hits negative one third, which would be roughly there, right? I'm not doing this terribly to scale, but um, but that's the point that we'd be looking at. Um, and that would be your final value. So we have some specific values. We have one comma negative one third, right? This should be actually at four thirds comma zero. Right, and then this point is at zero comma zero. All right, long problem, but that is.